you join the Working Families Party for the We Can't Wait concert? We out here in Philly doing a dang thing. I'm saying, I'm gonna meet Saliti, White Cup John. Y'all already know what type shit we getting into. We are coming together from all over Pennsylvania to demand our elected official support policies such as paid leave for all, Medicare for all, because with the global pandemic and everything that's happening, we can't wait for Congress to return to session to pass bills that impact people's lives. We're just here at the table. We got some yeah. stuff to give away. Yeah. Swag yeah. bags, yeah. some masks. Yeah. Some bracelets, we got information about how to do mail in voting. We got a QR code that people can register to do mail in voting. Our little swag bags, which is pretty cool. And they have like hand sanitizer, they have uh, some buttons, and they got uh, some people have some masks. Um, black yeah. Burgers, Black Butters Matter. Um, two, some more two, buttons. We got some I voted early yeah. buttons and some more uh, things. We'll be rolling uh, out uh, throughout the day. So yeah. we're very excited. Hey, about that. Hey. Gosh, today means opportunity. It means showing the people their value and that they're worth fighting for. We can't wait means that we need change now. We need Congress to act now. We need Biden to act now. We need senators to not be going on a four week recess when people are suffering. We can't wait means um, that one, everybody has a voice and that we're trying to get everybody included um, in our community because everybody is equally we can't wait means, you know, the time is now. And making people wait is harming people actively. Oh, we can't wait. We can't wait for our schools to be funded equitably. We can't wait for new jobs to come into the community. We can't wait for people to get, we can't wait for people to get into their homes and buy their first home, making sure that they don't lose their home. We can't wait to exercise our right to vote, which is a fundamental right for all Americans. Our whole scope of work is not waiting for anybody to do anything for for us. Our scope of work is uh, teaching our folks that they have the power to see the change that they want to see in their communities. No one else is going to do it, so we can't wait on other people. Yeah. So we have to do it ourselves. Us. I definitely think that's a big part of what that means to our organization. I'm here to support our care campaign and to support home care workers, making sure that they have the economic resources they need to survive. We can't wait for legislators to finally decide if it's time to pass good legislation. I think about the hundreds of thousands and millions, actually, particularly communities of color who came out against all odds, beat all barriers to cast their ballot in November of 2020. And we cannot wait now for the legislation that we need so that we do have jobs and freedom. What it means to us is that we can't wait for better systems to protect our people. Unemployed, underemployed, precarious working condition individuals. We need to make sure that the future is working for everybody, not just the one person. What we realize as part of this work is that actually like our fight doesn't end until the tension ends in our state and also across the country. And that's one of those things that we just can't wait for. We can't wait for things like our resources that we've been trying to have, um, you know, what to us for years. So pretty much that's where we're talking about making sure that we have action on the climate crisis, making sure that we have good paying union jobs, making sure that our Congress is passing things that are addressing criminal justice reform and ensuring our right to vote, among other things. We need to have care for those who have cared for us over the last two years, basically since this pandemic has kicked off. And we gotta make sure that we send a clear and loud message to the office holders and all the powers that be, that we as people cannot wait for what we need. We need it right now. The power of the people is stronger than the people in power. That when the collective pulls together, when all of us step outside of our hyper-individualism, we pull together as a community, then we can do great, amazing things, incredible things, that we can shift the narrative in this country, we can shift the movement energy in this country, we can actually make power do what we need it to do for us when we as a people pull together. Uh, people power is taking the capitalism and shoving it down the toilet and uh, putting the access back, putting the power back into the people's hands so we can make decisions for our lives and not capitalism making the decisions for us. 
nothing happens if the people don't show up. You know, the people have the power. And um, it makes so, me think of voting. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. Um, you know, I think, I think the people have the power to shift the narrative for a lot of what's going on in our communities and so um kind of just honing in on that and honoring that is what i think of when i when i hear people power and so people power is just like um i guess getting them to come by any means necessary that's a good way to build people power because in order for people to um come i guess we have to give them something that they want um, we can't wait for things like our resources that we've been trying to have, um, you know, what to us for years. That's what people power looks for me, man. It's just, you know, seeing so many people show up, um, you know, despite the circumstances and just raising their voices and refusing to back down, not taking the status quo for what it is, but refusing to back down. Uh, you know, that's what we're doing. We got a little something called the Toxic Tour featuring Clean Up Carl. You know, check it out if you want to. But that's what people power looks like to me. It looks like freedom. It looks like liberation. It looks like uh, justice. It looks like several, several, uh, it looks like several things. Like it looks like, it, it looks healthy. I, I don't know what that looks like, um, but we're fighting for it. We're fighting for justice in the military so that no other person that joins the military has to suffer military sexual violence. Uh, we're fighting so that that way no one that joins the military ever has to suffer um, discrimination or any prejudice because of who they love or how they identify or where they came from. And so when we resolve all these issues, um, um, I mean, we got a perfect world, but it's gonna take a lot of work, and I'm here for it. To me personally, it looks like everybody has a voice. It's not big money lobbyists in Congress. It's regular people in Congress. It's regular people being able to have a voice. It's a system that's fair for everybody, not for the 1% for the big corporations. It's a system where everybody has dignity, everybody is treated with dignity, everybody is treated with respect, and everybody has a voice in our democracy. That's what it looks like to me. Yes, peace. Everybody's receiving the same treatment in every possible way. Medical treatment, you know, jobs, um, being everybody being paid on a, on a, a you know a fair level. It's just healing. Yes, I think it would definitely heal a lot of things. I think people are struggling because of their needs not being met. So I think if their needs was met, but I think it'll be harmony, it'll be peace, it'll definitely be paradise. For a world without detention, a world without deportation, and finally a way where no, uh, a world where no human being is illegal. What it looks like when we have all our needs being met are communities of opportunity that work for everybody, not uh, communities that have been systematically divested from that cause and undergird a lot of the crime, the lack of education, the lack of jobs and opportunities that we see in our communities. We envision a world. Envision a city, envision a commonwealth where all of our needs are met, where we have not just what we need, but even some of what we want, and that we're not just surviving, but we're thriving. It's time to work. You know, you work for us. We put you in office. It's, you gotta, you know, you gotta do right by the um, by the community, right? At the end of the day, you are a representative of us. You are our voice down in D.C. And it's really important that you ensure that you're meeting and paying attention to the people that have voted for you. So we really ask that you think about the, all the communities, think about what's needed, and not get too caught up in politics, right? At the end of the day, you're, you're here to serve, and we hope that you will serve us correctly. Our message to Congress would be to pay attention to the people that need our help. The essential workers, as they put it, need us to make sure that the new working normal is working for everybody. I think they needed to be more uh, people-minded. As you would say, more people-minded. I think we need to be more people-sensitive to communities that are overlooked. It's not just about the, the pocketbook. It's definitely about the people. To do work. They need to do work. They need to make change. 
because that's why they were sent there. They need to save our democracy while they have a chance. I mean, come on, you got to protect voting rights or they're going to be gone. So let's go. Let's let's do it. <laughs> I wish that you cared more about people who are underprivileged and who need help. I wish that you cared more about the constituents that you propose to serve. But care can't wait. Care can't wait any longer. The people need it and they need it now. So we're tired of false promises that we've heard so many um, and so many people that use our community as like tokens to win seats and to win, become these political leaders. But when it comes down to it, what we've learned is actually is that our community is the strongest advocates are the ones that actually make shit happen. So for Congress, I would say that we need to start putting the money where it matters, like in our schools and, um, you know, um, try and curb the violence in some of these neighborhoods. Um, maybe if it, if we could give the kids something more positive to do, um, then that would get us in a better uh, direction for the future. My message to Congress today and every day going forward is that we as a people cannot wait for action on the climate crisis, for good union, for good paying union jobs, and to make sure that we are showing care throughout our communities. We can't wait. I would say we can't wait, Congress. I would say many of us put you into office at this very moment, and we need you to fight for us. We need for you to fight for our raises in the minimum wage. We need for you to fight for us for the John Lewis Voting Advancement Act. We need you to fight for us for the- Everyday people on the bottom get into the top. That's what we're about. That's what this event is about. And we're not willing to wait a second more for good health care, for good jobs, to make sure that our climate is in the condition for our children to survive. Are you with us? Make some noise, Philly, if you're with us.